Hello friends, James Stevenson here, helping you uh, through the next debate you see on X, where people can't decide, is a vehicle that has automated driving features, level 2 or level 3 or level 4, how do you know? It, it, does it go by feel? Do, do the SAE levels care about your feelings? Uh, Loki and I are here to tell you, friends, the SAE levels do not care about your feelings. They only care about design intent. What am I talking about? Well, I took it upon myself to make uh, a handy infographic uh, that I posted to Twitter, uh, captioning it, Are SAE driving automation levels a net benefit to society? I'm not even sure myself if it's a good thing that the SAE published these, but uh, I did want to help you understand how do you know for sure what level a vehicle is. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. I distilled it down to only four questions, only three of which you'll need at most to identify any uh, vehicle that has automated driving features. Where do you start? Well, you divide it right down the middle into levels 0 through 2 versus 3 through 5 with this question, was the system designed to require a human driver's constant attention? If the intent of the system is that there will always be a human driver watching, uh, monitoring, making sure uh, that the vehicle is driving safely and prepared to take over at any time, that vehicle is either level 0, level 1, or level 2. If not, if the system was not designed to require a human driver's constant attention, it's level 3, 4, or 5. This is per the guidelines. If you go read through the whole 100-page document, or however long it is, uh, you will walk away with the same conclusion and uh, I had Grok test me to make sure I'm not misleading anybody or providing any untrue statements with my infographic here. It's just kind of a decision flowchart for you to determine what level is this vehicle. If it's level 0, 1, or 2, the only other question you need to ask is, was the system designed to provide sustained steering and or speed control? Does it have a cruise control type component that can make it go faster or slower and sustain uh, while driving? Or does it have the ability to steer the vehicle, to turn it left or right, uh, with or without a steering wheel? Do those kinds of features exist? Was the design intent of that system to be able to do one or both of those things? If no, if it doesn't have any sustained steering and or speed control systems. It's a level zero vehicle. Features like emergency braking don't count because they're momentary. That doesn't count as sustained. Uh, so a level zero vehicle can have automatic emergency braking, or it can warn you if you're departing your lane. It can have lane departure warnings, and those are not sustained steering and or speed control, even if it nudges you back into your lane for a second. Uh, that doesn't count as sustained control. Uh, yes, but only one at a time. If your car either has a cruise control type feature that'll keep the accelerator uh, uh, depressed uh, to maintain speed, or if it has a lane keeping assistant on it, that's a level one driver assistance vehicle. You don't hear a lot about those, uh, but a lot of older cars will have only cruise control on them. Uh, level 2 is everything else. If it's not level 0 and it's not level 1, but the system was designed to require a human driver's constant attention, it's a level 2 system. No matter how good it is at its job, no matter how well it performs, no matter how safe it is, no matter how much of the driving task it does effectively, it's a level 2 system. A human driver must supervise however much driving these systems can do is how I parenthetically remarked on what level two partial automation, according to SAE, means. Okay, let's go down the other branch. What if the system wasn't designed to require a human driver's constant attention? Well, if no, then was the system designed to expect a human driver to take over if alerted 
e.g. to a system failure, or if this system was nearing the limits of its operational design domain, uh, they call it, meaning the conditions under which this vehicle is supposed to be able to drive itself. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Uh, so if the system expects that a human driver uh, will be able to take over if alerted by the system to take over, then it's a level three system, right? So you only need those two questions to identify, is it a level three vehicle? If it doesn't require a human driver's constant attention, but it does require a human driver to be able to take over if alerted to intervene, it's a level three system. Well, what if it's not expecting that a human driver will take over when alerted to? Well, then the only question you need to ask remaining is, was this system designed to operate anywhere under all roadway and environmental conditions that can be managed by a competent and attentive driver? If it is, it's a level five full automation system, a system intended by its designers to drive itself without human assistance anywhere within its region of the world and under all road conditions in which a conventional vehicle can be reasonably operated by a typically skilled human driver. Uh, if all that is true, uh, if, if the answer to this question was no and the answer to that question was no and the answer to this question is yes, that's a level five system. Everything else falls into the level four category. What's level four mean? It means the system wasn't designed to require a human driver's constant attention and the system will not prompt a human driver to intervene. If those two things are true and there are other limitations on it, such as geographic limitations, it's a level four vehicle. If it has any kind of limitations on it at all, uh, it's a level four vehicle. So. Where does Tesla's robo-taxi service fall? It falls in level four. How do we know? Because that system was not designed to require a human driver's constant attention. It's designed to operate even with nobody inside it, right? What about the second question? Was the system designed to expect a human driver to take over if alerted? No, again, the system design for Tesla's robo-taxi is for it to work even with nobody inside and with nobody remotely monitoring it who could take over if they were alerted. The system wasn't designed to alert anybody to take over. It was designed to drive itself safely. Even if there's a failure, it's able to uh, achieve a minimal risk condition, is what they call it. Over at the SAE, the engineers at the Society for uh, Automotive Engineering, uh, they say it needs to be able to achieve a minimal risk condition on its own without making a human driver do it. If those are true, it's a level four uh, operating system uh, controlling that uh, automated driving system. There you go. That's my video. Uh, unless Loki has anything to add. Loki, did I nail it? Did I one take it? Uh, it it's another one take masterpiece from James Stevenson. <laughs> All right, folks. With that, uh, I will thank you for watching the video. I remind you to like the video if you like the video. That'll let the algorithm recommend it to others like you who might also like the video. And a special shout out to my two executive producers, Kathy Kitchler and Rebellionaire.com. And I'll see you in the next one.